Okay, you said 14 weeks in here, and you got one chapter done in, in two Sundays. Well, <laughs> it'll go slower later, but this passage, 16 through 47, has a central theme. It's an, it's an argument, it's a presentation of um, the Lord Jesus to the um, Pharisees. And um, so we're we're gonna it, it just fits together in a good package, and that's why I um, put it together that way. So I'm gonna call this the controversy and claims of John chapter five. And so we're gonna read the entire passage, and on purpose, I will stop a few times just to kind of help us refocus our mind. Starting in verse 16. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus. Look, therefore, why? Well, we've got to get context. Let's go up to 13. And he that was killed was not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon thee. Verse 15. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which made him whole. So the, the man who was healed identifies Jesus as the one who healed him on the Sabbath. 16. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, my father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said unto also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also do with the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these, that he may marvel. For as the Lord raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, makes them alive, even so the Son quickeneth, and makes alive, whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, okay, that makes me, that makes me remember John 10, 27. My sheep, yeah, and I uh, hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give, give unto them eternal life. They heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, hath present tense everlasting life, and shall not come un into con condemnation, but is present tense, passed from death unto life. Super important. Verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given the, to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment, also because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bear witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. There is another, that phrase, is another is another of the same kind. 
if you were talking about the Holy, he's talking about the Holy Spirit there. Verse 33, he said unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that he might be saved. He was a burning and shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. Miracles. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have nothing, have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him, ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him he shall receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you. Oh, here it is. Even Moses, in whom ye trust. That's who accuses you. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? All right. So we begin. First, the controversy. See, the Pharisees see themselves as the arbiters of holiness. They're, they're the folks that look at and investigate and decide who's right, who's wrong. They, they have self-appointed uh, themselves to that. They investigate all new preachers and teachers. Their review of the ministry of John the Baptist happens in John 1. 19, it's in John, so I read it. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are they? See, they were, they, we got to check him out. Who are you? Right? See, there's plenty of reason to be concerned about Jesus' ministry. This healing on the Sabbath. You're not supposed to be working on the Sabbath. And he's doing all this healing on the Sabbath. First, he healed the demoniac um, on the Sabbath. I have for auto records Luke 4, 31 through 37. And but I am only asking you to read 31 through 35, whoever has number one. And it came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on Sabbath day. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his words was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace. Come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. Jesus, teaching on the Sabbath, meets this man who was a demoniac and he heals him. One, healed on the Sabbath. Number two, the defense of the disciples picking grain on the Sabbath. Matthew 12, 1 through 8. That's going to be uh, uh, number two. And just read one and two. Just read one and two, yes. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were in hunger, and began to pluck the ears of corn, and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, my disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Right? They're managing this. Right? What are you guys doing? Eating and picking stuff to eat. He healed the healing of the withered hand on the Sabbath. That is number three. Matthew 12, 9 through 14, I'm asking you to read 9, 10, 11. And when he was departing thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hands withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it 
responsible for the deal, and instead of saying that they might pursue him, and instead of the fact that what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay a hold on it and be quiet? Yeah, we even referenced this one last week, right? So let's just, just keep that in the back of your brain, because we're going to talk about it in a second. All this healing that happens on the Sabbath, what's the purpose? Why is it? Well, what's Jesus' response to the allegations? He, he says, yeah, he confirms it. I'm doing my Father's work. Verse 17. Oh, hey, let's look at that. 517. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Here's a question for you. We know it talks about God, or Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath, right? So does God observe the Sabbath? Just because we are, just because we are so 
associated with uh, the God of heaven, the God of creation. So claim number one, Jesus equal with God. Like I said, Jesus does not deny this accusation at all. He confirms it. He endorses it. Now listen to this. Listen and look closely with me. Jesus answered uh, them, My father worked with him too, and I work. And then, um, verse 19, Then answered Jesus and said to them, Verily, verily, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but he, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Jesus is saying, Look, if what you're saying I'm doing is sin, it's God that did. It's God that committed sin. That's what you're accusing God of is sinning today by healing on the Sabbath. And either, this is hard to, to state, but you cannot be great about Jesus. Here or here. Oh, I'm kind of... No. Look, that's the importance of this passage and all of this narrative to the uh, to the uh, Pharisees. Either Jesus is a liar or he's the Son of God. It is one or the other. You decide. You decide who he is. Because there is no ambiguity. <clears throat> one with the Father, he works. If it's a if it's a sin, God commits. They are one. John 10.30. I'll just quote it. I and my Father are one. John 10.30. As our example, he sets aside his, um, his, uh, some of his attributes. The goal is to do the will of the Father. Hebrews 10.9. That's going to be Rodney. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. Okay. Ooh, that seems, it seems like there ought to be more to that for us to understand, right? So read now 8, 9, 10. Above, when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offering and offering for sin that he is not, neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, and he may establish the second. By yep. the which yep. 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 <laughs> by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. There's the old I'm doing the will of the Father, God, Jesus does the will of the Father, and the old is passed away, and now there's a new sacrifice, and it's Jesus himself, and that's how we are redeemed. Satan tempted it. And he veiled his glory. This is uh, Mark's. Uh, he veiled his glory and laid aside the independent exercise of his divine attributes. Jesus never stopped being God. Never. He was the God man. Don't ask me to explain that. Because I can't. But he was always God and he was always man for all times, including when he walked the earth. And here's, uh, oh, number six. I got somebody out there doing this. Luke 4, 9 through 12. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from the temple. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hand they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou. And Jesus answered, said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So the devil tries to use the scripture against Jesus. Could Jesus have jumped off of the he was carried supernaturally by the devil to the top of the uh, of the temple? Could he have jumped off and landed safely? Yes, he could have. But he voluntarily 
set aside some of his attributes in order to be fully man for our sacrifice. And that's that proof right there. And that's why he uses the scripture back against the devil and says, God, Jesus, uh, the word says not to tempt the Lord your God. He's one with the Father in judgment. Oh, that's verse 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. We're together in judgment. And Jesus, in the book of Acts, in a sermon by Paul, Acts 17, 30 through 31, and the times of this ignorance, God would that, but now commanded all men wherever to repent, because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained. Concerning what she had given assurance unto all men, in that he had raised him from the dead. Yeah. And that's the authority from God the Father, all in one, and his authority is proven to us through his resurrection, and that he will be the judge. And that's the point that Paul was making in that sermon, which is a, 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 that section is a narrative of the sermon. Okay, claim number two. Jesus' authority to raise the dead. Oh, does he have that? <laughs> Here, Jesus explicitly outlines how he is the resurrection and the life. Oh, John 11, 25. Okay. That's me. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, Though he were dead, yet shall he live. That's pretty clear. <laughs> there are four resurrections. First, lost sinners. This, remember now, don't, don't lose context. This is Jesus making an argument to the Pharisees, right? Where they want to kill him. So now he's <clears throat> making an argument to them. He's explaining things to them. First resurrection that's mentioned by Christ is 24 and 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. There's the rapture right there. You know, that, that trump is the voice of Jesus. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Woo, that's a resurrection, eh? Right? You think about that. Just you think about that. If Christians that were buried at sea, in the Navy, whatever, devoured by lions in the Colosseum, all of that stuff, they're all coming up. That's a resurrection, boy. <laughs> Yikes. The resurrection of Jesus himself. Verse 26. That's the second resurrection he talks about. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Here's what that means. Here's the point. The angel did not roll the stone away so to let Jesus out. The angel rolled the stone away so we could see he was gone. God didn't, God the Father didn't send some sort of miraculous power that took the rotting flesh of Jesus' body and resurrected it. He, of his own power, raised himself. That is what that verse says in verse 26. Look at it closely. For as the Father had life himself, God does not get life from anybody. He has always been, he has always been alive. So hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Jesus raised from the dead by his own power. That's what he's saying. That he's predicting this to the Pharisees. You ought to know when my tomb is empty, you ought to not pay people to not to, to lie about it. You ought to say, 
He was the Messiah. That's what his point is. Yeah. Right. He was in the tomb. Very good. Yep. You would not see corruption. Exactly. And he wrote and he rose again. Okay. The future resurrection of life when believers are raised from the dead. Okay. <clears throat> Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Okay. So there's that there's that resurrection that's mentioned. It's really mentioning the first one a second time. Oh, but there's another. There's a last one. 29b. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Not such a good resurrection. Who's number eight? And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fell away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small great, standing before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is good. This resurrection. <clears throat> will be sobering for us to view. But death and hell will be drawn up and stand before God and they will be found guilty because they are not redeemed by the blood of Christ. And then they will be swept off for eternity back into the lake of fire. This is the last resurrection that Jesus has mentioned. Claim number three. There are valid witnesses to Jesus' authority. First of all, John the Baptist, 30 through 35. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Verse 33, now, John. He sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. <coughs> he was a burning and shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in that light. So John was a lamp unto you. He spoke of me. That's what Jesus is saying. Verse 36. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to do Finish the same works that I do. Bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. What is that talking about? Genesis 315. Okay. That the promise is finally come and that the redemption and salvation. Yep. What are the works that Jesus is talking about here? What are we, what's his argument here? Well, remember, go back to the context. What, what's the argument? What's their complaint? Working on the Sabbath, he's doing what on the Sabbath? He's healing, he's performing miracles. That's what that verse is about. Verse 36, he says, You want a testimony? It's my works. I'm, I'm healing. You want a sign? Right? You want the sign, to, you know, except of Jonas? Right? The fact that I'm doing these. 
these miracles is assigned to you, the children of Israel. That's the whole thing that I'm doing here. So that's the second testimony, or witness. Also, the word of the Father. All right. Thir 37. I'm gonna, we've read this once. I'm going to read it, some of this. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Where was this in your brain? Where is this? What does this remind you of? Something happens after the resurrection, before the ascension. The, 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 the followers of Jesus walking on the road to Emmaus, and a, and, a, and a man joins them, and they walk along, and he starts from Moses through all the prophets, revealing Jesus. That this is a reference that Christ is making to the Pharisees. Look, I'm in there. It all testifies of me. This is another testimony of me. It's another witness. It's the word of the Father because it is the scripture. Okay, next is number nine, a little longer passage, 2 Peter 1, 18 to 21. And this book that came from heaven we heard, That's the point of you. If you can hear the voice of God, you know, He says, I was, I was there at the Transfiguration and heard the voice of God. You guys, you all have a better witness from God the Father, and that's the Word. Let's paraphrase and talk about that Transfiguration. So let's think Peter is one of the three disciples at the Transfiguration, and they are there and they see Jesus transformed into his glorified state. And huh, there's Moses. And there's Elijah. And they are talking with each other. And Peter thinks, hey, this is great. He's always got a great idea, right? And he says, hey, I know. We'll make a tabernacle. We'll make a, 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 an offering or a, 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 a tabernacle for, for you and for Moses and for Elijah. Great idea. And God interrupts. <laughs> and he speaks from heaven. And he says, This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Those two are worshiping him. Moses and Elijah aren't, aren't giving advice to Jesus. They are worshiping him. And God couldn't God couldn't stand it. <laughs> and he's got to straighten the witness. He's got to straighten the testimony and says, this is Jesus, this is my son. Hear what he's got to say. That's why Jesus was baptized when the Holy Spirit came down. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Another witness. Another verbal witness. But the point is, the general point is, God the Father has spoken through his word, which is a more sure word of prophecy, which you have told, you have read to us. The answer is, there is God's word for you. Verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So here's our conclusion. Oh, wait a minute. Before 
before I read the conclusion, I want to I want to reference one more time. Jesus goes back and says something about Moses. Verse 44 to the end. How can you believe which receive honor of one another? You guys, you guys receive honor of each other and, and not from God. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you. Who is it? No, it's Moses. Even Moses in whom he trusts. For had he believed Moses, he would have believed me, for he wrote with me. But if he believed not his writings, how shall he believe my words? Um, right now, if you would, Deuteronomy 18.15, which says this, these are the words of Moses. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, Unto him shall you hearken. That's the prediction of the Messiah that he's coming, and you should listen to him. Awesome. So the conclusion. Remember, this is an argument Jesus is making to the Pharisees. What were the Pharisees doing? They were the arbiters of truth. They were the arbiters of righteousness. They were to say who's sinning, who's not sinning, who's obeying God, who's not obeying God. Does our knowledge of the Bible give us a big head? Or a burning heart. Let's go forth from here with the heart of Jesus and not just knowledge. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beauty of your word. We thank you that it is all we need to know of our current state, of our future state, and the state of those that we know. We thank you for Roger's testimony and that he is in the presence of you right now, and that we will see him again one day, and we will rejoice in his redemption. Thank you for Jesus, and thank you for his perfection and his ultimate sacrifice for our salvation. We praise you, we thank you, and we ask that you will empower us to live this Christian life to your glory. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. I forgot this. This is a sign-up. I'm going to put it in the back. I'll do it with a